That's what's, that's what's going on in the book of Job. Y'all know Job, don't you? Job is one of the most unusual, peculiar stories in the entire Bible. Because Job throws off the rhythm of the Hebrew Bible. Job throws off the rhythm of the Old Testament because when God talked to Abraham, God made a promise with Abraham. When God spoke to Moses and gave Moses the laws for the children of Israel, God made a promise to Moses. And so the swag of the scripture in the Old Testament is that if we do good, good will happen. If I follow God's rules, if I join the church, if I put God first, if I tithe, if I come to rejuvenate revival, if I go to new members class, if I get in the choir, if I lift my hands doing worship, if I'm nice to my family, if I'm truthful, if I don't lie, if I don't steal, if I don't cheat, if I'm faithful to my husband, then immediately God will bless what I'm trying to do because I'm doing the right thing. So the whole rhythm and river of the flow of the Old Testament is that God will bless who blesses you. God will curse who curses you. If I do good, good will happen. But everything gets turned on top of itself when you get to the book of Job. Because here is a man who was upright, who feared God, who turned away from evil. He was a deacon in his church in the town of Uz. He was a philanthropist. He gave back to the community. He was on the front row with a three-piece suit on every Sunday. He was the first one in Bible study, the last one to leave, the first car in the parking lot, the last car to pull off. He was the one in worship saying amen preach preacher he was the one in worship when the choir sang nobody had to beg him to stand up he stood up and praised that was Job he loved God he eschewed evil he feared God he did all the right things raised his children the right way and bad still happened now in the Old Testament that's not the rhythm of what's going on so when we get to Job we get confused because now we got to wrestle with the question of why does God allow bad things to happen to good people and why do good things happen to bad people if you were in seminary that word is called theodicy when you have to wrestle with the goodness of God and, and, and put it beside the evil that happens in the world you are a good God who is all powerful and omniscient that means you can do anything you want to do God you know everything and you are not present so you're everywhere at the same time so the struggle is if there's an omnipotent God a God who is all powerful and he says he really loves us and a powerful God does not stop the pain that happens in our lives it messes with your mind why is a 30 year old shot and killed God you're everywhere Everywhere. weren't you there that morning God you're powerful couldn't you stop the bullet I, I, I'm sorry I ain't come for y'all who are super duper saved I'm being real today have you ever wrestled with your soul and said God what in the world is going on the sister just joined the church last month Mr. Joseph Scott walked up to me when we were getting ready to move and said, Pastor, ask us for a seed offering. He was the one willing to sow extra and above tithes and offering. And he's the one in Emory suffering right now. God, something wrong with that. If you want to take some people, God, I got a whole list of trifling Negroes and Negroettes you can take. But why you got to mess with the people trying to do the right thing? And God said, son, I hear all your questions. But see, in your humanity, you don't understand my divinity. Because my ways, are y'all going to help me here, are not your ways. And my thoughts are not your thoughts. See, you see today and tomorrow. But today ain't nothing. To, in one year in your eyesight is but a day in the eyesight of God. God's ways are different. And we got to learn how to trust God even when we cannot trace God. There was a conference call in heaven. Grace was at the table. Mercy was at the table. Justice was at the table. And Satan was at the table. And I, wanna, I want y'all to understand something. We, we really have to work with this thing called Satan. Because he shows up 
in the first chapter of Job. You, you go, 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 go home and read it when you get a chance. God called a conference in the middle of the table in eternity. And Satan was present. And God had a conversation with Satan. He said, Satan, what's up, bro? What you about these days? What, what you been on these days, bro? He said, I'm going to and fro. Throughout the earth seeking whom I may devour. God said, Job, have you considered? He said, Satan, have you considered my servant, Job? Job said, I want to get to him. But you have a hedge around him. Church folk don't know when to shout. See, understand this. Satan is not the adversary of God. Satan is an instrument of God. Satan is used to challenge and question and accuse and bring out of us what God has already put in us. So the only thing that Satan did in the garden with Adam and Eve, he said, uh, who told you? You will surely die. When Satan had Jesus in the wilderness, all he did was try to tempt him and challenge him and question him. Can you turn these stones into bread? Jump off the cliff. Won't the angels come and save you? Bow down. I'll give you everything. Satan ain't God's adversary. God doesn't have no adversary. So let me just get it straight right now. Satan, I think you're getting too arrogant. You ain't on God's level. God uses you to prove to us some of his purposes. And somebody just thank God the devil's already defeated and God may use Satan but Satan is not on God's level he does not have the victory God ain't waking up getting ready to fight the devil he's already been defeated when Jesus lost blood on Calvary 